Hi folks, I'm here today to talk to you about our tragic heroin overdose death epidemic. As our culture continues to spiral downward into a moral abyss, we see the resulting increase in violence, breakdown of the family structure, rebelliousness, and drug abuse. Around 1,000 Americans per week are dying from overdoses. The current overdose epidemic is the worst in our nation's history. Pennsylvania has one of the highest rates of heroin addiction in the country. We're in the top 10. About 10 Pennsylvanians per day die from drug overdose, and the rate is increasing. That's 300 per month. That's more than twice the number of people killed in car accidents. In any other tragedy, that would be top news every night, yet we hear little about it. Our kids and adults are being drawn into this scourge at record numbers. We would never let any other public health crisis get this far. Last year in 2015, there were 3,383 drug overdose deaths in Pennsylvania. The number of deaths rose 24% in a single year. For comparison, the number of drug overdoses in PA in 2013 was 2,426. That's an increase of almost 1,000 people in the span of just two years. In Washington County, 73 people died last year from overdoses. And in Allegheny County, that number was 422. By comparison, in 2010, just six years ago, there were just three heroin overdose deaths in Washington County and 50 in Allegheny County. Children are being born to drug addicted mothers. Parents are stealing their children's medications to support their own drug habits. Nurses taking their patients' drugs in order to feed their own addictions. Children are stealing and selling family heirlooms to pay for drugs. It was reported that a homeless person addicted to heroin is likely committing four to five crimes per day to support his habit. Most of the crimes committed from robbery and theft to assault and murder are drug related. 85% of our prison inmates are there because of a drug related issue. This is a sad and alarming reflection on the degradation of our society. Within our state, the Southwest region has the highest deaths per 100,000 population and Allegheny County is second only to Philadelphia in number of drug reported deaths statewide. This affliction spans all boundaries of race, gender, and socioeconomic status. It is safe to say it affects every category of our citizenry, and we all know someone touched by this tragedy. I have participated in numerous public hearings on this subject across the state, on both the Bipartisan Policy Committee and the Judiciary Committee. We have heard testimony from prosecutors, judges, counselors, caseworkers, mental health professionals, doctors, families, and addicts. From Allegheny and Westmoreland counties to Lycoming, Lackawanna, and York counties, from Pittsburgh to Scranton and everywhere in between, all with similar stories. Good people are being drawn into a dangerous drug addiction leading to overdose and untimely death. From what I see, there are two major paths to this addiction. One is opioid prescription abuse. These are a class of drugs with common names like Lortab, Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Oxycodone. Experts say 75% of heroin addicts today started with prescription drugs. You've heard the stories. An athlete gets hurt or a worker is injured on the job and prescribed opioid pain relief. After the injury, the individuals find themselves addicted to the opioids. Withdrawal from opioids is excruciatingly painful. Quitting cold turkey without medical supervision can actually kill a person. That's how bad withdrawal is. In desperation, when addicted, persons can't obtain another prescription, they often turn to heroin, a drug that is plentiful on our streets. It's also very cheap, as little as $3 per bag. That's less than it costs for a bottle of beer. These addicts do not look like stereotypical junkies. They can lead fairly normal lives almost until the end. It could be your neighbor, pastor, police officer, teacher, moms with children, college students, maybe even your son or daughter, not the bums under the bridge you were expecting. Even more heartbreaking, veterans injured in Iraq and Afghanistan, our nation's heroes, have often been overprescribed opioids and are now addicted. The medical profession now realizes that prescribing guidelines for these powerful pain relievers were too lax in the past. Listen to this statistic. The United States has only 4% of the world's population, but consumes 80% of the world's opioid prescriptions. Something is wrong here. The other path to addiction is through our culture and there are many subpaths. 49.2% of Americans 12 years old or older have used some type of illicit drug in their lifetime. 
Some start with gateway drugs such as marijuana. Some take them to be accepted, to raise their self-worth. Some to cope with problems. Whatever the reason, the result is the same. Self-destructive behavior that often leads to death. I have also seen the near end state of abusers. Their lives degraded to an extent you can't believe. Living in filth and their own excrement, oblivious to anything but the next high. Overdosing, brought back from near death and still determined to find the next high at any cost to themselves or anyone else. This drug is literally poisoning our society. As legislators, we're trying to deal with what we can by law. Tough penalties for drug dealers and treatment for addicts. One piece of legislation we passed in 2014, Act 139, provides the antidote naloxone, brand name Narcan, to first responders. This life-saving drug can actually reverse a heroin overdose and has been highly successful. There are still some first responders not carrying it with them, but EMS, all state police, and many municipal police are using it. Over 1,300 Pennsylvania citizens are alive today, including 24 in Allegheny County and 41 in Washington County because of naloxone. No other state is close to our ability to protect and serve our citizens in this way. We are considering ways to provide treatment to addicts rather than locking them up. We continue searching for ways to integrate them back into society as productive citizens once they are rehabilitated. We are trying to deal with the denial and stigma that keeps abusers from seeking treatment. We have instituted a prescription drug monitoring program to prevent doctor shopping for opioids and affect early intervention for abusers to get them into treatment. My pawn shop legislation, which passed the House overwhelmingly, will help police return stolen property to victims and identify criminals selling stolen property to pay for drugs. We have created guidelines for doctors to reduce opioid prescriptions. None of this will cure the problem, however. Secretary Karen Murphy of Pennsylvania Department of Health reminded us that every time we think we have seen it all, another drug comes to the forefront. Drugs are often mixed with more potent components to form even more powerful drugs. Most recently, carfentanil, which is an elephant tranquilizer, 10,000 times more powerful than morphine, is laced into heroin. A dose the size of a grain of salt can kill a man and has. This drug poses a special risk to first responders because it can be transferred by touch. So first responders must take special precautions when assisting drug overdose patients because of the danger to themselves. So as we try to fight this with the legislation, I believe it is not the ultimate answer. I am convinced we have to fight the larger cultural war against drugs. We have to take back our youth from a dysfunctional, self-destructive culture that celebrates rebelliousness and self-gratification. This cannot be done by legislators, but it is imperative it be done in our communities. We must involve parents, teachers, community groups, churches, and community leaders. We have to restore our traditional values and reinforce them in every aspect of our life. Folks, this is not the first time we've seen opioids and heroin weave a deadly path through society. Opium comes from the same plant. In the 19th century, war broke out between Great Britain and China, and these conflicts were known as the Opium Wars. British merchants having difficulty satisfying the demand in England for porcelain and other fine Chinese goods conspired to addict Chinese citizens on opium, knowing addicted persons would sacrifice anything to achieve a fix. It was cruel, dark note in British history. One observer noted how severe the opium problem became in China. He said, I quote, When a man has got himself into this condition, he must have opium, and must have it all the time. He's buying opium now, not so much to gratify his selfish vice as to keep himself alive. He becomes frantic for opium. He will sell anything he has to buy the stuff. His moral sense is destroyed. A diseased, decrepit, insane being, he forgets even his family. He sells his bric-a-brac, his pictures, his furniture. He sells his daughters, even his wife, if she has attractions, as slaves to rich men." Unquote. Sadly, this description fits what we are seeing today in our commonwealth and our nation. And without intervention, it will surely get worse. I will not give up the fight in the legislature, but I ask you all to think about supporting a broader fight in our culture that has deteriorated in almost imperceptible increments over the last few decades until we are faced with what we have today. Our culture is systematically undermining our traditional values and our reliance on God. And when we remove that mechanism that governs a man's heart, you get chaos and disorder. 
We won't be able to hire enough police or build enough prisons. They're killing the police now. We have to push back on our culture. Can you promise, as our founders did in our declaration, that with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we pledge our sacred honor, fortunes, and lives to solve this problem? Lives are too important to surrender to this scourge on society. We all need to pitch in to save our loved ones. It will only worsen until we take a stand. I want to hear from you. Let's start that discussion for the sake of our country and our future. Until next time, in God we trust.